Welcome to Season 2, Episode 2 of In Response EDH. I'm your host Albert, and I'm glad you can join us for another awesome gameplay video. On today's episode, we have Jesse returning, and he's trying to make us all miserable again by bringing his partner commander pairing of Ishai and Elegeth. This deck is built around Elegeth's ability to draw tons of cards and a lot of taxing effects to keep his opponents in check. He starts off with the Swords of Plowshare, Kefnet the Mindful, Thran Dynamo, Seagate Restoration, Reflecting Pool, a plains, and an island. Next we have Baron, and he's brought the angriest of jelly beans, Omnath, Locus of Rage. This is a token based landfall deck. He wants to pop out a bunch of tokens, pump them, and finish the table off through a good old fashioned beatdown. Baron decides to keep an opening hand of Zendikar's Royal, Sakura Tribe Elder, Dragon Brood Mother, Cinder Glade, Mountain, and two snow covered forests. Alec is back and looking to grab another win on the channel. Today he's playing Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale. This is a Voltron build looking to suit up a single knight with tons of equipment for free with his commander's ability and deal big chunks of damage to his opponents. He chooses to start with a Midnight Reaper, Grand Abolisher, Sigarda's Aid, Axe Guard Armory, Tournament Grounds, Rugged Prairie, and a Sacred Foundry. And finally, I'll be playing my Moldroth of the Gravetide deck. I'm looking to stockpile my graveyard with tons of goodies to keep recurring them like any Moldroth the deck wants to. But it may or may not contain an infinite turns combo in there to finish the game. You know, because I love taking extra turns whenever I can. I decide to start the game with an opening hand consisting of Villainous Wealth, Merciless Executioner, Coma, Cosmo Serpent, Ancient Tomb, Sunken Hollow, Exotic Orchard, and a Forest. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you if you enjoy the content and would like to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. When you do, you're not only contributing to the channel's growth, you're also being entered in our monthly patron giveaways, as well as receiving other patron-only perks and merch as well. All proceeds of our Patreon will be reinvested into the channel to bring you the best content possible. With that being said, and the introductions out of the way, let's start the game. Jesse starts the game by playing a Reflecting Pool that can't tap for mana. I drop a tapped Sunken Hollow and pass. Alec plays a tapped Axe Guard Armory as his first land and passes. Baron plays a tapped Cinder Glade and passes. Jesse starts turn 2 by dropping an Island and passing to me. I follow his lead and just play another land and say go. Alec plays a tapped Sacred Foundry as his land drop. He then taps his white mana to cast Sigarda's Aid and passes to Baron. Baron plays a snow covered forest and taps both mana to cast a Sakura Tribe Elder. He immediately sacks it to search up a mountain to the field and passes. You done, Baron? Yeah, I'm good. Sir? All right, here we go. Let's keep it moving. How you doing? <laughs> keep it moving. Let's go. Jesse drops a planes on the field and taps out to cast Kefnet the Mindful. I play a Misty Rainforest as my land drop. I just decide to pay one life to crack it and search up a breeding pool and have it come in tapped. Alex starts his turn by playing a Tournament Grounds. He then taps two white mana to cast a Grand Abolisher. Baron plays a Forest as his land drop. He then taps two mana to cast three visits. He chooses to search up a Stomping Grounds to the battlefield tapped and passes. Jesse starts turn four by playing another Plains as his land drop. He then taps all four mana to cast a Thran Dynamo and ends his turn. I untap and draw. I then play an Exotic Orchard as my land drop. I tap an Island and the Exotic Orchard for black, since Alec has a land that taps for black. And I cast a Baleful Strix. As it enters, I draw a card and pass the turn. Alec draws and plays a Rugged Prairie. He then taps three mana to cast a Midnight Reaper. After that, he chooses to move to combat and swings the Abolisher at Baron for two. Baron untaps and draws for turn. He then taps out to cast Annihilia's Intervention, where X equals 3, to search 3 land cards into his hand. He chooses a Dark Depths, Spire Garden, and a Thespian Stage as the 3 lands. 
Jesse uses this time to tap the Thran Dynamo to cycle Ash Barons away to search up an island to his hand. Baron then plays the Thespian stage as his land drop and passes. Jesse untaps and draws for turn. He drops the island he searched for. He then taps four and floats one colorless to cast one of his commanders, Ishai, Ojitai Dragon Speaker. He then follows that up by casting one of his most played cards, Ley Line of Anticipation. After that, he ships the turn to me. I untap and draw. I play an Ancient Tomb as my land drop. I then tap all six mana, taking two from the tomb to cast my commander, Moldrotha the Gravetide. Since I casted a spell this turn, Jesse's commander would get a plus one plus one counter. Wrong bird. <laughs> Alec plays a snow covered plains as his land for turn. He taps two mana to cast a black blade reforge, and Jesse's commander gets another plus one plus one counter. Since he has a cigar as eight on the field, he gets to attach it directly to his midnight reaper, making him an eight seven. Alec moves to combat and again swings at Baron for ten, dropping him to twenty eight. After that, he ends his turn. Baron untaps and draws for turn. He taps 5 mana to cast Nyssa who shakes the world, which also grossed Jesse's commander. Baron upticks Nyssa to untap the Thespian stage and make it a 3-3 elemental. He follows that up by playing Dark Depths as his land for turn, and then he decides to pass to Jesse. Jesse untaps and draws for turn. He plays a command beacon as his land drop. Jesse decides to move into combat and swings his commander at Nyssa. Before he declares blockers, Baron activates the Thespian stage to make a copy of the Dark Depths with no ice counters, which lets it transform into Merit Lage. Before he declares blockers, Jesse pays one white mana to cast Swords of Plowshares to exile it. This gains Baron 20 life. Ishai then gets in for damage and drops Nissa down to 2 loyalty. On his second main phase, he taps 6 to cast his second commander, Elegeth, Crossroads Augur and then ships the turn to me. I untap and draw, and start by playing the Misty Reinforce from my graveyard. I immediately pay one life and sack it to search up a Zagoth Triumph to the battlefield tap, followed by casting a Merciless Executioner, growing Ishai again. In response, Jesse taps one blue mana to cast Serum Visions, but with Elegeth on the field, he instead draws three cards, since his commander replaces the Scry effect. He then chooses to sacrifice his Kefnet. I sacrifice the Executioner, Alex sacrifices his Grand Abolisher, and Baron can't sacrifice anything. Since Alex Reaper sees the Abolisher die, it deals one damage to him and he draws a card. I follow that up by choosing to cast the Executioner again from the graveyard. Jesse sacks his Ishai, I sack the Executioner again, and Alex sacks his Midnight Reaper. After that, I enter combat and swing Moldrotha at Nyssa, finishing her off. On my end step, Alec flashes in a cranial plating and moves to his turn. He untaps, draws, and plays a gemstone cavern, followed by playing an open the armory, allowing him to search up an aura or equipment to his hand. He chooses to grab Swiftfoot Boots and puts it into his hand. After that, he passes to Baron. Baron untaps and draws. He then taps out to cast Zendikar's Royal, followed by playing a Spire Garden as his land drop. When it enters the battlefield, the Royal creates a 2-2 elemental creature. Jesse starts turn 7 by casting a Seagate Restoration, drawing him 6 cards and giving him no maximum man size the rest of the game. He then moves to combat and swings Elegeth at Baron for 5 commander damage. After that, he ends the turn. I start my turn tapping 7 mana, taking 2 damage from the Ancient Tomb, to cast Coma, Cosmo Serpent. I then play the Misty Rainforest again from my graveyard, paying one life to sack it and find a tapped watery grave and put it onto the field. After that, I move to combat and swing my commander at Alec for six commander damage. On my end step, Alec flashes in the Swiftfoot Boots. On Alec's upkeep, I make a 3-3 Coma Coil and he untaps and draws. On his main phase, Alec casts a Armored Sky Hunter. Before he can equip the boots on the Sky Hunter, I sacrifice my coil to tap down the creature. After that, he pays to equip it with the boots and passes the turn. On Baron's upkeep, 
I make another coil, and he untaps and draws. He then taps out to cast a regal behemoth. As it enters, he becomes the monarch, and decides to play Shatter School the Hammer Pass as his land for turn, triggering the Zendikar's royal and creating another 2-2 elemental. After that, he moves to his end step and draws for being the monarch. Jesse starts his turn by playing an island and paying 4 to cast Smothering Tithe. I then sacrifice a coil to tap down his commander. With nothing else he wants to do on his turn, he just passes to me. I make another coil on my upkeep and don't pay for the Smothering Tithe as I draw. I then attempt to cast a Rhystic Study, but Jesse doesn't like when other people draw cards and counters it with a Render Silent, keeping me from playing any further spells for my turn. After that, I move to combat and swing Moldrotha at Jesse and my Baleful Strix at Baron. In response, Jesse flashes in a Mystic Remora. The damage resolves and I become the Monarch. I then move to my second main phase and play a basic island. On my end step, I draw a card for the Monarch and pay two for the Tithe Tax. Alec takes this time to flash in a Masterwork Ingenuity. As it enters, he has to become a copy of the Cranial Plating and attaches it to the Sky Hunter. He doesn't feed the fish and Jesse remembers to draw later on his upkeep. I make another coma coil and Alec draws a card, not paying the tithe tax, letting Jesse create another treasure. Alec plays a Temple of Malice as his land for turn, scrying one and keeping it on top. He then attaches the cranial plating and the black blade reforged to the Sky Hunter for free thanks to Sir Gwyn's ability. He moves to combat and swings it at me. Before damage, he resolves its attack trigger and reveals the top 6 cards of his library, which are Godsend, Murderous Rider, Lightning Greaves, Whisper Silk Cloak, Dark Steel Plate, and a SRAM, Senior Edificer. He chooses the Whisper Silk Cloak and equips it to his commander. Sir Gwyn's ability will resolve when he goes to attack and he loses 1 life and draws a card, not paying for the tithe. We move to damage and I get hit for 20. Y'all good with this? <laughs> yeah. <fuck laughs> no, it, no, it's objective. Fuckers. Monarch. So. Yeah, go ahead. Your monarch thing. Fuck uh, that crown. Alec then moves to his end step and draws for being the monarch, not paying for the tithe tax and giving Jesse yet another treasure. Baron untaps and draws and doesn't pay the tax either, letting Jesse make another treasure. He then moves straight into combat and swings both of his 2-2 elementals at Alec. Alec blocks one with his commander but can't block the other, taking two damage and losing the crown. Now that Baron is the monarch again, the regal behemoth helps him cast Dragon Brood Mother by tapping only three lands. He follows that up by paying two mana to cast a Great Henge. He then casts a Scoot Swarm and it comes in with a plus one plus one counter and draws a card and elects not to pay the tithe tax. Trigger the Mystery more off the Great Henge. Oh yeah, you can draw a card as well. Yeah. <laughs> After that, Baron decides to cast a Wheel of Misfortune. We all reveal the number we've chosen. Jesse chooses zero to keep his hand and the rest of his wheel, giving him 21 treasures, and Baron loses six life. You guys could have chosen zero. Oh, uh, draw a card off the Wheel of Fate. Oh yeah, you can mm -hmm. draw a card. After that, Baron drops a basic force on the field and makes an elemental and a copy of the Scoot Swarm. On Baron's end step, Jesse spends some of his treasures, flashing in a Grand Arbiter, Augustine. Then four more to cast Siani, Eye of the Storm. Another six for a Sun Titan, returning Kefnet to the battlefield with his ETV. Four more to cast Raph Capuchin, Ship's Mage, followed by a Glenelendra, Archmage. Then another four for a Thunderclap Wyvern. And finally, paying three for a Thassa, God of the Sea. After all that, he decides to start his turn. On Jesse's upkeep, he spends a treasure to keep the fish around. Baron makes a 1-1 Dragon token off his Broodmother, and I make another Coma Coil. On his main phase, Jesse casts an Amirius Call, giving all his creatures indestructible and not bothering to make the 4-4 angels, since his next spell is an austere command, choosing both modes to destroy all creatures. In response, I make a deal with the devil to only sack one coil to save my coma and not tap down his creatures, as long as he doesn't attack me. 
he obliges and goes after Baron for 32 damage. And since he attacked with 5 flyers, Siani allows him to scry 5 times. But Elegeth replaces that and he'll draw 5 cards instead. On his second main phase, he casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting as Mystic Speculation. After that, he draws for becoming the Monarch. I make another coil on my upkeep and draw for turn, not paying for the tithe. I decide to pay 8 to cast my commander and lose 2 life from the Ancient Tomb. After that, I go to play my land, but Jesse said he had a response to Moldrotha. This is not gonna affect <laughs> you're not gonna you. It's not gonna affect you. This is not gonna affect you. You're not doing anything this turn. So <laughs> okay. No. Um, Why is that not gonna affect me? Place a thing that taps <laughs> your land <laughs> and catch. Let you cast spells in the graveyard. <laughs> After that, I pass to Alec and make a coma coil on his upkeep. He draws for turn and also refuses to pay his taxes. And Jesse makes another treasure. He then plays a spectator seating as his land for turn and pays 3 to cast Danatha Cap. He uses the rest of his turn to equip the Swiftfoot Boots and the Masterwork of Ingenuity, which is actually a cranial plating. Jesse responds by casting a 4C, allowing him to draw 6 cards for 4 mana. Alec then equips the actual cranial plating to Danatha. I help him out by sacrificing my coils to tap down his Kefnet and the Archon. He then swings at Jesse, hitting him for 12 damage and becoming the Monarch. He draws a card on his end step and allows Jesse to make another treasure. Baron starts his turn and safe to say no one cares about paying the tithe tax anymore. He then pays 8 mana to cast his commander. Omnath, Locus of Rage. Omnath comes in with the plus one plus one counter from the Great Henge and he draws a card. After that, he plays a mountain as his land drop and makes a 5 5 elemental and a 2 2 elemental. Then he just passes the turn. Jesse starts turn 10 scrying one with Thassa but instead draws a card and then draws for turn. He drops the planes on the field and casts Elish Norn Grand Cinnabite. He then remembers that he didn't pay for the Mystic Remora and lets it go to the graveyard. I make a deal with Alec to tap down the Glen Alindra so that he can cast a Colossus Hammer and save his Danatha. Before Jesse moves to combat, I tap down his Siani. Then we realize an elemental died on Baron's side and Omnath gets to deal 3 damage to a creature or player. Baron decides to shoot down the Thunderclap Wyvern and then Jesse moves to his attack step. He swings 9 damage at me and 7 at Baron, taking us both out of the game. Alex starts his turn, drawing a card and actually paying for the tithe. He pays 3 to equip Danatha with a Black Blade Reforge, and then another 2 to equip the Whisper Silk Cloak. Alec moves to combat and swings his Danatha at Jesse. Before damage, Jesse spends his treasure to draw a card with Kefnet's ability. He then flashes in an Archon of Coronation, making him the Monarch as it enters. Since he's the Monarch, damage doesn't cause him to lose life, but Alec does gain the life and regains the crown, but forgets to draw on his end step. Jesse draws a card off Thassa's Scry ability and then draws for turn. He casts Favorable Winds, giving all his flyers plus one plus one. He chooses to move to combat and swings all his creatures at Alec. Paying two to make the Sun Titan unblockable, when the Sun Titan attacks, he returns a Mystic Remora to the field, and he pays another two to have Thassa become unblockable.
Since Alec can't block, he takes 60 points of damage. Since he attacked with 7 flyers, he draws another 7 cards, forgetting to take the Monarch. Alec untaps and draws, this time not paying for the tithe, and Jesse makes a treasure. He taps 3 to cast a Stoneforge Mystic. And at this point, Jesse remembers to become the Monarch and draws a card. Alex searches up an Argentum Armor to his hand with a Stoneforge. After that, he plays a Swamp for turn. He follows that up by trying to equip the Stoneforge. But Jesse says, hold your horses, he may have an answer. Way too many answers. That's uh, shit. But do you um, got the right answers? I definitely have the right answers. <laughs> you sure about that? So. Are you sure about that? Jesse flashes in the Council's Judgment. He chooses Danitha to get exiled, and so does Alec. Alec finally equips the boots over to the stone forge, and the table finally realizes something. Gonna die, Wait, this died as soon as it came in. What died? Off the L storm, this died. Oh shoot! Oh my god, it's a two! It's a one two! <laughs> Seeing as he no longer has a board or a chance, Alec concedes to Jesse. Congrats to Jesse for nabbing another win. Jesse builds some very powerful and impressive decks, and is someone you have to try and stop early on in the game. If not, he will just outvalue you to death. So it didn't help that Baron played a wheel of misfortune, and we all chose to draw 7. We practically just handed him the game at that point. The game got a little messy towards the end there, but it was the last game of the night, and we were all pretty tired at that point. This really wasn't a good showing for my Moldrotha deck. I didn't have anything going on in this game, besides the coma. So I was just using the coils to keep myself alive, and help Alec take down Jesse. But ultimately, I failed. Jesse keeping me playing one spell a turn with the Render Silent and Archon of Emeria really kept me from being able to do anything to try and deal with him. By the time Baron built up a big enough board state, it was already too late. Jesse had the answer with Emeria's Call and Austere Command. Not to mention exiling the Merit Lage as soon as it hit the board really set Baron back early on in the game. Hopefully we can see Baron and Omnath have a better showing in the future. Alex's deck seemed to be doing exactly what it wanted to do. He was able to get in for a lot of damage, but unfortunately he was not able to get around the Archon of Coronation, negating all that damage that he was aiming at Jesse. So it was a great showing, but just not enough to get the win this time. Well that's a wrap on episode 2. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like the video and leave a comment, and if you aren't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Before we go, we'd like to give a big thank you to our amazing patrons. We are glad to have your support and thankful for each and every one of you. We here at In Response would like to thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe and make sure you follow us on our social medias. We also stream every Friday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day.